Hi, I'm Dave from BDH. How did it start? Well, the answer to that's pretty simple. Being a keen, keen sim racer and uh, among a group of mates, we used to race regularly and we were all using the Logitechs, the Thrustmasters, the, the cheap end stuff, and uh, kept dreaming of owning one of the pro sims. And a mate of mine said to me, well, we're in lockdown. Why don't you get in your shed and build one? So I thought, well, go on then. And that was it. I came in here three years ago this month. In fact, we were all still in lockdown. And this was the proof of concept. An idea I had after being asked to build shifters or if I could make shifters for my little uh, community of good, you know, good friends and who didn't really want to spend the best part of a couple of grand on one of the high-end shifters out there. So from that three years ago, we then developed the first bazooka h1 which is this very one you see the differences here and there to the ones that are out there now i mean we've we've sold i think in excess certainly now we're in excess of 500 of these so some of you out there watching this will probably be owners and thank you very much for your custom um so yeah we went to the bazooka we listened to the market constantly we read the feedback obviously on our shifters and everybody else's. We don't build anything else than shifters at this time, so it's easy to keep your eye on the ball, specialising in that niche. And we looked and people seem to be moving towards less clutter on their rigs, less aluminium to polish maybe, I don't know. But people were wanting dual mode. And all of a sudden, I suppose you could say that the lower end ones with the dual mode became popular again. So a few more firms have moved into that market and we've been quietly in the background developing our own. Again, it's taken longer because we build things, we hope, to last a lifetime. So we came up, I came up, well, I locked myself away in this little man cave shed workshop of mine and I came up with this idea, which was just a, a quick, so you've got your H mode like so, and then by pushing that down, you've then got sequential mode. And you probably notice there's a magnet on here. This one's on contactless sensors, magnetic reed switches, and an Arduino board, which again, we've developed, and I will tell you about that in a moment. So this was built. I tested it myself, and I tried my best to break it, and I couldn't. So it was then shipped out to various people, our test pilots, as we call them, and it's had hundreds and hundreds of hours of use, and it hasn't missed a beat. So I thought, great stuff, cracked it, got a new product. Now this was probably about a year ago when this was first built, but when I gave it to people, everybody said the same, it's brilliant, Dave, but it doesn't look like a BD8 shifter because everybody's so used to the familiar branding, I suppose, if you want, of the uh, bazooka, the round. So it was decided that we would not scrap this, but we would use what we'd learnt from doing this and put it into a new format, which was more like our bazooka brand, or the round brand, if you like, the tubular. So I've now come up with this, and I'm pleased to say that this is now available. This has obviously not got its covers on, because you know, as much as we like to protect what we do, we also like you to see what we do. You know, if you're gonna be paying a lot of money for these, these are big investments, which we appreciate, and it's another reason why we like to give top quality. So we now have this one, which is basically this, in a round format, just slightly larger for various reasons. You've got your H mode. It's rocking about a bit. And then you flip this over and you've got your sequential mode. So basically, there it is. There's your dual mode shifter, all built, which is basically a H1. It's a bazooka without compromise. Everything's the same there, but we've added that second shaft in and mechanisms to provide a sequential mode as well. While I'm on with that, the electrics I discussed with this one, which were, just to recap, was an Arduino board. Now. Our man, JC, has written the program on this. And this was done with the sensors, the contactless sensors. Again, a lot of people were concerned about the micro switch use of the bazooka. 
although I have to be honest, we've had very little issue with them, but again, we listened. So what we've got now for this one is, and they're not actually fitted at the moment in this because I've undressed it, if you like. We now have our own bespoke main board and we have that made now. It's got our own software on it, firmware, etc. unique VID, PID for the USB. So there's no chance of any conflicts. If there is, it's somebody else using our technology. And we also have printed circuit boards with Hall effect sensors. Now this was a prototype for the H1 bazooka, but the boards that go in here are just pretty much the same. So we've got the little non-contact with magnets. So from a user point of view, from your point of view, dual mode shifters, it causes a problem in as much that your third and fourth gear become your up and down. So what we've done is in the software, we've added a, we've added a ninth sensor because these are eight gears. We've added a ninth sensor. So when you lock over to sequential mode, what that does is the, so that sensor then tells the software to negate all the H gears and it turns third and fourth into up and down. So there's no conflict in the software, in the game, in the simulator, whatever. I think that's quite a valuable point because you, I've done it myself where I've been on the start line, let's say with a H pattern or I'm in H pattern mode and I suddenly realise that it won't go into gear because oh, I'm not in sequential. So literally by flicking that, you're into sequential mode and hopefully the game picks it up. Other than that, you've got to come out of the game, go back into content manager or your options screens on uh, the other sims and reconfigure everything or select a different profile. By then, you join back into the server and the race is half over and you've already lost, so it's a waste of time and you get frustrated. So we thought about that and we've put that idea out to our test pilots and others and they all thought it was great. So it was a bit more work, but the software's there on our chips to give you that advantage or just ease of use so yeah i know from experience that you like from the the thrustmaster going from h to sequential mode took about 10 minutes by the time you've unscrewed everything and screwed the other plate on and rotated that other thing we didn't want that so we made this as simple as we possibly could like that and done the software job as well for you so as I say, this is now available. Hopefully, you'll all enjoy it. And we look forward to any feedback on it. Valuable feedback, good or bad. We take it on the chin or we'll say thank you. You know, that's brilliant, but well, we always say thank you. But we'll take feedback, good or bad. You know, we aim to please.